Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name's Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. Leading things off in the capital city where lawmakers passed a bill geared toward property tax relief on Tuesday, but it's nothing like what Governor Jim Pillen said he wanted. Lawmakers voted 34 to 11 to end debate on a bill that front loads income tax credits for property taxes. It also expands school tax credits and restricts annual increases in local property taxes to the rate of inflation. But taken out of the bill were dozens of sales tax increases to pay for additional property tax relief. Also, the state won't be taking over the funding of public schools. Governor Pillen called the summer special session after the legislature failed to pass his proposed plan to cut property taxes by an average of 40 percent during the regular session earlier this year. The plan passed yesterday comes up far short of what he said he wanted at multiple town halls around the state. Lawmakers will begin debate on budget cuts related to funding the bill on Wednesday. Meanwhile, citizens in Grand Island have made their voices heard overwhelmingly supporting the Good Life District Economic Development Program. According to unofficial election results, almost 7,500 ballots were turned in. Over 5,000 voted yes for the Good Life Program. About 2,400 voted against. Committee members say they're overwhelmed by the response from voters and they say this will have a huge impact on future generations. Oh my gosh, this is a 30-year opportunity for us. So that in and of itself is generational. So, you know, what we achieve in the short term and what we achieve in the long term is going to be pretty amazing. And there will be definitely multiple generations that, that get to experience and enjoy what this is going to mean for our community. The vote comes after the legislature approved a section of the north part of town be classified as a good life district. It means the state sales tax in that area is cut in half starting in October. Now the city wants to replace that state's tax cut with a local option city tax that would help pay for infrastructure costs in a proposed multi-purpose development. Now, once the election results are certified, the city council will consider creating an economic development program authorized by the voters. A Northeast Nebraska police station that hasn't seen major upgrades structurally since the 1980s, giving the public an idea of what they'd like to see done in a special election this November. Luke Stara has more. The Norfolk Police Division is looking to expand their building so it will go up to 25,000 square feet as part of an expansion that will hit voters this fall in the area. An open house was held at the Norfolk Public Library Tuesday night to tell the public exactly what the plan is and how the police, the police division is going to attain it as part of that meeting. The Chief of Police Don Miller bringing up things a need of space with workers on top of workers in some unsafe conditions as well as a need to try and attract talent for the police division, one that has been very understaffed as many police to police stations and county sheriffs can attest to over the last couple of years. Now, how will it be done? Well, a half cent sales tax increase, which will start next June still has to be voted on by voters this general election in November. If it does pass, you will see that over the next four years, which will bring an estimated around $16 million to Norfolk. The building is anticipated to cost around $11 million, according to Miller, but $5 million of that that isn't used will go to the streets department. Some of the information learned at the open house tonight. Planning to have a couple more of these as we head closer and closer to the general election. And Miller encourages anyone to reach out if they have any questions on it. But that's all we know for now. Reporting for News Channel Nebraska, this is Luke Stara. Cherry County in north central Nebraska looking for a new assessor. At Tuesday's county commission meeting in Valentine, commissioners accepted the resignation of current assessor Jackie Moreland. 
The commissioners now have 45 days to appoint someone else to the elected position. That appointee doesn't need to be a current resident of Cherry County, but will have to relocate there once they assume the position. Candidates also have to have an assessor certificate from the Department of Revenue. You know, history of hiring anywhere in a rural area, you know, is always tough, you know what I mean, but maybe we'll have several applicants, that would be a blessing for sure. Moreland's resignation comes after being placed on probation because of compliance issues highlighted by the Department of Revenue. Her office also faced criticism for inaccuracies in recent property valuations. Residents in the Omaha Metro could be looking at two straight days of flash flooding. This video was taken Wednesday morning near Bellevue. Flash flood alerts were issued in Douglas and Sarpy counties after the Papillion Creek swelled past its banks briefly. The National Weather Service says Sarpy County received widespread over two inches of rain overnight Tuesday with reports of over three inches of rain falling south of Papillion. And more rain could be coming. The National Weather Service says another inch of rain, if not more, could fall on Nebraskans along the Missouri River Wednesday evening. In international news, an Iranian retaliation against Israel could be imminent. The situation, in fact, so uncertain, Secretary of State Antony Blinken delayed his scheduled trip to the region. Iran has condemned calls for it to stand down. Two U.S. officials say Iran hadn't decided on a course of action as of last night. Now, the U.S. is rushing to both secure a Gaza deal and stave off a regional war in the Mideast. Amy Kiley has more. We are in the most precarious place since World War II. The U.S. is rushing to prevent a potential regional war in the Mideast. It's trying to calm tensions between Iran and Israel. If they escalate, the U.S. and Iranian proxies in other countries might end up involved. The United States needs to be prepared uh, to join Israel uh, and strike if necessary, because frankly, uh, the threat posed by Iran is far bigger than just Israel. Part of the U.S. approach is deterrence. The Pentagon is positioning U.S. military resources in the region. The Biden administration is asking Congress to approve a $20 billion weapons deal for Israel. That equipment wouldn't reach the ally for years. But Israel's Minister of Defense says it sends a message now. The U.S. also is pursuing a diplomatic approach. Everyone in the region should understand that further attacks only perpetuate conflict, instability, and insecurity for everyone. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden says he's concerned the situation with Iran could harm ceasefire efforts between Israel and Hamas. He wants them to accept a deal he proposed during talks set for tomorrow, but sticking points remain. Our focus is on de-escalating tensions. Uh, working on enabling that ceasefire and getting these hostages returned home. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, there are all kinds of hazards that farmers can experience while driving tractors. Explosives, though, aren't high on the list, but authorities say that's exactly what one farmer hit with his tractor in a rural field north of Beatrice on Tuesday. Gage County officials say the farmer reported hitting an object which turned out to be an artillery shell. Thankfully, explosives experts determined the shell was inert, meaning it was heavily corroded in no danger of actually exploding. No word on how the explosive came to be on the property in the first place. And finally, the past year hasn't been without its challenges for animal shelters, so a little fun with dogs and their owners is okay with the close of a community's water park for the season. Doug Kennedy has more. The annual Doggy Dip fundraiser of the Beatrice Humane Society was Tuesday night at the Big Blue Water Park in Beatrice. Every year we see new faces and it's uh, one of the best parts because a lot of them are animals that are adopted from us and so yeah. getting to see them kind of come back and be a part of the community and honestly uh, there's a couple of kiddos here that are actually Parvo survivors. They, they got Parvo while they were with us and their um, foster homes, um, you know, helped them through that treatment and ended up adopting them and so just getting to see them like live their lives. 
Carly Fittis, executive director of the Humane Society, said the organization continues to meet challenges thanks to a supportive community. Um, animal sheltering across the country has been battling this last couple of years um, with big dogs in particular. Mm -hmm. We've really struggled. Um, and so, um, you know, we are, we are definitely challenged, um, but we are fortunate in that we have an amazing uh, community supporting us. And so while other shelters are considering things like space euthanasias or behavioral euthanasias, um, we're still figuring things out. We're still um, taking great care of the animals in our care. And, um, you know, we're blessed to have the community that we have. But it's because of events like this that we get to keep doing those things and keep helping those animals. As far as cats go, we're actually rocking our cat adoptions. We're going to break last year's adoption numbers courtesy of our cats. So, um, you know, it's, it's the give and the take. And this year happens to be a cat year. Two shifts of dogs and their owners came to the water park, the larger animals for the first hour, the smaller pooches for the second hour, all for a donation of $10. Two of the newest Humane Society efforts are a clinic for spaying and neutering, along with a trap, spay, and neuter program for feral cats, trying to control that population. Fittis says 2,500 dogs and cats have now been spayed or neutered through the specialty clinic, and the organization is working hard on the community cat issue. And we're starting to see less and less cats come into, kittens specifically, come into our shelter. And I'm just um, super excited to see that continue to build and grow and our community to be able to continue to build and grow as fantastic, responsible pet owners because they want to do the right things. It's just, um, you know, figuring out how to make the, the, the money match at the end of the day. And so we're really excited to be able to help our community be the pet owners they want to be and help these animals out. The TRAP program started about a year ago, and since then, Fittis said over 550 outdoor feral cats have been trapped, spayed, or neutered, and then released. Those are cats that have no interest in living with us. Those are cats that have no interest in being near us, but they can go and they can have fantastic lives being out, not making more babies, not making more problems, not causing us more grief. So we're so excited to see those animals go back out. But last night was for the dogs, chasing each other, splashing about, and retrieving tennis balls. From Beatrice, Doug Kennedy, News Channel, Nebraska. And you can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com. Click on the news tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.